Police 3 Fire Brand, Kelvin McKenzie coming up. And now it's time for Olympic medalist and women's rights warrior Sharon Davies. And the war on women's sports continues with controversy in Canada, where Danielle McGee will become the first transgender cricket player to play in an official international match after passing all the eligibility, eligibility criteria, excuse me, to represent Canada on their qualifying journey towards the 2024 Women's T20 World Cup in Bangladesh. The 29-year-old was born male and would not be able to compete for a women's team under the rules of athletics, cycling, swimming and rugby. But the International Cricket Council's eligibility rules mean there is nothing blocking the milestone moment for the world of sport. Well, Sharon, great to have you here. The Women's Rights Network have slammed this development. What do you make of it? Um, you, you say, you know, this person was born male. They're still male. I mean, <laughs> human beings cannot physically change our biological sex. Um, men will throw a ball 25% faster. And at the moment, every single piece of peer-reviewed science we have says that we cannot remove male puberty advantage. So we're basically saying that, that this trans-identifying male can go into women's sport with a known advantage, can displace a female athlete from competing for their country, and that's all okay. And I just don't understand. I really don't understand why we're doing this. You know, we fought for years to get equality for women in sport and sports like cricket, rugby, football, where actually you can earn a living. You are taking away the opportunity for someone, for a female, to have a living in the sport doing the thing that they love doing. I know. I, I, I think it's so wrong. But look, you know we do both sides of the story on GB News, Sharon. So what I want to do is let you know what the International Cricket Council say about this, and I'll then get you to respond off the back. So, th so they have said in a statement tonight, we can confirm that Danielle went through the process as required under the ICC's player eligibility regulations, and as a result has been deemed eligible to participate in international women's cricket on the basis that she satisfies the MTF transgender eligibility criteria. So what do you make of that, Sharon? Okay, so I'll let you know what the criteria is because I always like to deal with facts. Yeah. Okay, so this is what Please. I always talk about. All right, I, you know, I absolutely believe anyone should be able to identify and live their life authentically. However, I believe in sport. We do sport with our bodies. We don't do them with our feelings. So we have to deal with facts. Mm. The criteria that, that they have to meet is that for one year only, they have to reduce their testosterone to five nanomoles. Now, I have less than one nanomole in my system. So they get to reduce their testosterone, which they've had all of their life. For 26 years, they're identified as a male, went through male puberty, played cricket in Australia reasonably unsuccessfully, moved to Canada, reduced your testosterone to five times the level of the average female, and then they get to compete for Canada against women. And the thing that's even more ironic is that the testing that they have to do is once a month, and they organize that with their own doctor. So there's no spot checking. And I know because of all the history with the East Germans that it takes two days to remove testosterone from your system. So that that's how the East Germans were able to, to pass all the tests when they went to all the, the major internationals. So, you know, it would be extremely easy to turn around and go, well, I've got a test on Friday and here we are on Monday. I'm going to make sure that I reduce my testosterone. So on Friday I pass and then immediately afterwards I'll stop suppressing my testosterone because we have no independent testing. We only have testing by that athlete with their own doctor. So there are so many holes in the system. And here in the UK, the ECB's policy is self-identification. No reduction of testosterone for any period of time whatsoever. Just today I'm rocking up and today I feel like a woman, so I'm going to actually mm. play against the women. And we have fully grown no. um, you know, males that identify as females that have gone through puberty throwing balls at 12-year-old girls in this it's country. It's absolutely nuts. And then because it's a team sport, Sharon, we also get into some of the areas uh, that turned into a controversy with Leah Thomas and the swimming team in the US because, for example, presumably – they will be sharing changing facilities. Now, I have no idea if uh, Danielle has medically transitioned, has had surgery to transition, but Leah Thomas hadn't. And many women in the team actually felt deeply uncomfortable being in a changing room with Leah Thomas's male bits on display. Yeah, I mean, I'd be pretty confident to say there's no surgery happens because if someone has to suppress their testosterone, that means that they have the facility to produce testosterone. <laughs> so, so that, you know, the chances are that yeah. there hasn't been any surgery. Um, 
yes, I mean, it just makes it makes women extremely uncomfortable that they're forced to, to share a space with someone that has male genitalia. And I just believe, particularly when it comes to young children, that should absolutely not be the case. You know, if you're an older person, maybe you can find ways or you can voice your opinions. Having said that, though, I mean, you know, I know from speaking to female athletes in this country and from around the world, they have a real problem speaking out. They wish to speak out, but they are scared witless of speaking out. And, and that is the place that we well, look, to now that we have... You've so seen what's <laughs> happened with Rasheen Murphy this week. You know, the Irish singer Rasheen Murphy. She, she talks about puberty blockers, Sharon. And tonight, her record company, shame on them, says, oh, we're not going to promote her record anymore. So this is what happens. This is why people are too scared to speak out. That's right. And that's why it's really important that people like the ECB poll their members, you know, ask their members what they want to do. Yeah, and yeah, every yeah. single time the governing body does this, we come back with the right answer is that the vast majority in the 80s and the 90 percent want fair sport. Yeah. And that is their priority. Well, England so Netball's poll- just done that. And uh, as a member, I was asked and I thought that was very respectful. But I hope that they are transparent with the results of it as well so that we are listened to. But Sharon Davies. Uh, brilliant. Yeah, and we're rowing. Yeah, rowing have done the right thing. So when, when we do, totally. you know, we get the right result. So just totally. keep trying to be as vocal as you possibly can. Good message.